Quick intro to today's episode, we got to go to some sort of store to pick up an SD card. I already downloaded the Slicer program this morning for the 3D models. We want to go to Wawa for breakfast, and then going to Second Life to pick up some more work to do in the evenings. <laughs> Would you say that Wawa was delicious? Yes, although I wish I had gotten the cookie. And not the brownie. Oh. Well, I enjoyed the brownie, so. Now we are headed off to Second Life, and we are going to give the owner of that company a special beer-related gift. Okay, so we just picked up the parts from Second Life, and now we are headed to... Target, Best Buy, somewhere around there. Target's probably going to be cheaper than Best Buy for getting that memory card. Alright, let's go to Target. <laughs> Fall into your trap? So we just got out of Target and I picked myself up a Ultra Plus 32 gigabyte SD card. So that SD card is going to go into the camera and then the camera memory card, which is an old 16 gigabyte memory card, is going to go into the new 3D printer. Woo! So we're back home. My bedroom looks like an absolute disaster. But that's probably because baby Garrett's room took away our closets. But I'm still happy that we did it because now he gets his own room. So we are going to move the 3D printer and accessories over to my side of the bed because it has a dedicated outlet back here which isn't activated by a switch because if I end up turning the light on when I walk into the room it turns that lamp on but that lamp is on the same wall circuit as the 3D printer currently. So let's say that somebody came through here in the middle of the day, the thing was running and they went, oh, let me shut this light off. There goes the 3D printer. So let's move everything out of the way and put it over on that side. Did anybody ever tell you that cleaning is just putting things in less obvious places? So here's everything set up. Very simple. It's just on the side of the bed here which means I won't be able to run it at night for the time being until we can get some kind of other shop type area to put this in. But I suppose the next step is to turn everything on, uh, find a model to stick in it, and start our first test print. This is the first recording on the Ultrafast SD memory card that I just swapped into the camera, 32 gigabyte. Yes, it's not the biggest storage I could put in it, but I don't need any more than that. That's gonna be hours of footage for what I do. So my SolidWorks isn't connecting properly at this time, but no matter. So we went on Thingiverse and I created an account, it's my first time being on here, and I wanted to print something small and simple as my first print. And by request, Jess, I'm going to do something Zelda themed. So it's these very simple Zelda shaped uh, Triforce earrings. This is by Carrie the What, published on October 31st, 2014. I need to attribute the author. So what we did was we downloaded all the files and then I am going to open up Cura, which is a free software package for slicing the 3D files. We're going to open up the file, choose the Triforce earring, and it places it on the bed, just like that. In the settings, I've changed it to the Prusa i3. It's ABS and normal quality. Again, this is all experimental to me. There may be some fiddling required. Um, Hmm, adhesion plate. I don't think that's required. Uh, it shouldn't be any support structure needed because it's very, very thin, very small piece. And it says down below that it should take about nine minutes to complete this print. What's nice is it already recognizes the SD memory card in the, in the G drive. So we will save to removable drive. It is currently saved there. So we should be able to hit eject. Computer says it's okay. Pop the memory card out. It's just a simple 16 gigabyte SD memory card. Back over at the printer. I will switch it on. It says that the card is removed. So let's go ahead and put the card in. Hopefully I get it in the right orientation. card inserted. So then we should be able to go into the menu, scroll down to card menu,
Triforce Earring, Bed Heating. So it's going to go up to 80 degrees and then the extruder is going to go to zero? Hmm. Again, this is all a learning process to me. Let's check back in in a few minutes after the bed's heated up. I wanted to note that I haven't recalibrated anything. So it's going just as it left. I probably should have recalibrated it. So if the print turns out like garbage, it is completely my fault. Hey Jay, does this look familiar? Harbor Freight, buddy. <laughs> oh, it's exciting. 225. Okay, the print should begin any second now. Oh. We're printing, Rory. It's printing. I'm noticing now with the shadow effect that maybe the light over top was a bad idea. The bathroom. I love it, Dad. You love it? I love it too. I love it. What is it making? It's making an earring. What you say? It's an earring. It hangs from your ear. It hangs from my ear? Yes. What if I get another ear? What name Mason? Mason. Who made Mason that? I can't make Mason. Mason's your friend. We can't print people yet. Well, we shouldn't print people. Put it that way. Okay, so while that's going, we can check the percentage of the file that's already printed. So currently we are at 15%, 16% already completed. The slicing program told me that it's supposed to take about nine minutes for this whole process. I'm not sure I can hold up the camera for that long. So let me check back in with you in a few minutes. Okay, so first issue, first problem. Um, I think it was moving too quickly because it was passing through its own already printed material. So let's scrape this piece off and see what we end up with on the other side. So this is what we ended up with on our first try. Um, hoping to get an angle where you can see the shape starting to come out. I mean, it was doing it. It was going pretty well for a while. And then all of a sudden, maybe the nozzle was too hot or it was moving too quickly. That's a possibility. Um, but you can see this is the side it was working with. So obviously not a great part. So let's do some investigating and see if we can figure out what the problem is. Okay, after a quick chat with Jay. I learned that I may have had the presets to the heater nozzle wrong. Uh, the bed was too close to the nozzle so I readjusted that in the z-axis up and down. So now we are set to bed temp at 90 degrees and nozzle at 230 degrees. So the bed's currently heating and so is the nozzle. I also did clean off and reapply the Elmer's glue water mixture uh, in the center. You can see where it's all nice and new. Once the bed heats up, it should all be the same color. Just as a heads up, I don't think anyone should go into this thinking that it's just going to be perfect the first time. I have a huge advantage here because it's already been put together and it's already been working. As I think back now, if I had purchased the more expensive MK2 pressure, I'm pretty sure that I would have been, well one, still assembling it. It's supposed to take a few hours to just put together. But fine tuning and tweaking it to make it correct is key. Everything needs to be pretty much perfect it seems. So 
I am eternally grateful that I'm starting with something that's already been put together and working. I know it can produce good prints because he did one in front of me when I was at his house. So thanks again, Jay. I'm thanking Jay a lot in this. I want to credit him and say I really appreciate how he helped me out as much as he did. Jay was nice enough to leave this GoPro mount. Uh, he was using it for a time lapse, which would be something I would love to get into if I get a GoPro. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. It's, <laughs> it's just a silly YouTube channel, right? As a side note from this new memory card, it is so quick. It moves so fast. Uh, one, just recording to the camera. Would highly recommend anyone that wants to start doing this, get yourself an ultra-fast HD SanDisk memory card or whatever your camera's going to use. The other thing is, writing stuff to the computer takes a quarter the amount of time that it used to. So this is going to make my life so much easier. Not only that, but I have twice the amount of storage space. So I can record straight HD for almost two hours now. Oh! Almost there. Should kick on just after we hit 9090. The suspense. There she goes. Okay, so it doesn't matter which heats up first or last, the bed or the nozzle. All right, fingers crossed. I did adjust the height slightly, so we'll find out. <laughs> Could just ruin another part, who knows. I do apologize for that shadowing. Uh, let's see if coming from the side will make a difference. Slightly, so we may need to make a mount for over at that edge. I can see one of the goobers on the right side there, but it's not part of the actual print. So let's see how this one goes. Test print number three. On a side note, I may have the nozzle too close to the bed. That could explain why it's pushing through some of its own material. So I just scraped this chunk off of the nozzle. I wonder if I've just been pushing hardened material from the nozzle through the rest of the piece. So it didn't get a thorough cleaning. I just thought of it the last second and scraped it off. So, well, the print's about to start. So <laughs> the print's about to start. So let's see what happens. So while we auto home, uh, this one got further, but I noticed it wasn't adhering correctly. So it was starting to pull up uh, in the front. We're getting really good clean prints against the glass. Uh, it's on top that's not being so great at the moment. So. I think I have the nozzle too close to the surface, so let's try changing that and see how it goes. Test number four. Uh, set the parameters of the bed at 100 degrees, the nozzle at 230, uh, feed rate or flow rate at 90%, and when I did the height of the z-axis, I made sure that the business card was hardly touching at all. I also applied a new layer of glue to the top to make sure adhesion actually works. I noticed with the last print, print number three, that the top eyelet here was starting to peel up when it would run across the top of it. Note to self, starting height is key. <laughs> this print's looking much better. We're currently at 43%. Uh, the eyelet on the top, let me show you. Uh, the ring piece at the top, which you would put a hoop through, that has been unsticking itself from the bed, so it means that the top gets screwed up. But I'm curious to see how the rest of it turns out after it's fully completed. Now it's at 48%, so it's moving pretty quickly. And overall, it's pretty quiet, actually, as it's running. So 
So we changed a few more settings and this time I'm building it with a RAF. I don't know if that's going to improve things or not, but it looks a lot cleaner to begin with. This RAF process takes a lot more time. So it's kind of building up this base. <laughs> I'm just wondering when it's finally gonna get to actually printing the piece that I wanted to print instead of this platform for the piece to stand on. Although the other thing is, if it adheres to itself much better, then it may be worth it. That way it doesn't pull up from the glass itself. Oh. Okay, so we're actually printing out Triforce pieces right now. Okay, I'll keep you updated. So, additional notes. It appears because I didn't have it set to fill in the entire assembly, it's been drawing it kind of hatched, or say, without the whole thing filled in. So, we may need to change that in the file and try again. So, this will be the first print we let do 100%. And it's auto homing back, and total build time was 18 minutes. And most of that was spent building the base, not printing the actual part. So let's pop it off the plate and see how it looks. It's still not perfect, but we can notice a lot of changes between this one and our first print. Yeah, uh, big difference. So I think, without being too aggressive, we should be able to, again, I'm doing this all one-handed. Okay, maybe I need to put the camera down for this. So already it looks considerably better than the first attempt. So we certainly got more of a usable piece out of this. Um, I haven't acetoned it or anything, just cleaned it up a little bit with the X-Acto knife. But we're getting there. We are certainly getting there. Okay, sweating. Currently running print seven, eight, I don't know. It's getting better and better each time though. And bed adhesion, adhesion is key. I don't know if I've stressed that enough so far. Having the part stick to the bed is so crucial because if it lifts just a little bit of it up and then catches, that's it. It's taking that part with it. Um, adjusting the nozzle size, Jay has been super helpful. He's been messaging me on Facebook, uh, helping work out a bunch of the bugs. I found out that the extruder nozzle was laying down some material because it might be too hot or it may have been off the bed too far. I originally thought that it was supposed to be closer and then I backed it off because it wasn't printing right. So we're trying lots of things. This is very much a learning process. The print that it's laying down now looks promising as they all do. <laughs> so we will see if this one makes it to 100% or if I have to cancel it halfway through. Let's find out. When we started this, it wasn't nighttime outside. <laughs> Anyway, let's see if you can see how this one's going. You can see some glob jewels, but I think that may be in the modeling process. It may be how the printer perceives a corner, so it spends more time there than the rest of it, but so far, definitely best looking print yet. So that attempt just finished in seven minutes, and here is what we are left with. So let me peel that off the board and see what we got. Hot, 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 hot. So I think we've been at this for two or three hours now. Here's all the failed attempts and there were a few of them. But if we look over here, you will see the final product that I ended up with. And there's the first one we started with. So a big learning curve, but I mean, that's, come on, focus. That's, that's pretty impressive for my first, say, two hours of 3D printing. At least I think so. Um, the back isn't as smooth as it could be, but again, we are still learning and I am super impressed with that. So thanks very much for watching. I'm sure we'll be doing a lot more 3D printing coming up. Please stay tuned for more episodes. If you could hit the subscribe or the like button, I'd really appreciate that. That helps out the channel immensely, like you wouldn't believe. But thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next episode of Do Something Every Day 2.